what's good everybody hit that like button share and subscribe i was too hype i almost hit it up early in the morning but guys john jones right here verifies everything i said about witchcraft listen check it out okay he said this okay i am just not ready that's what he said when they said time to fight right let's talk about this because this gets real man i can't make this up first peter chapter 3 verse 15 but sanctify the lord god and your body you're supposed to sanctify yourself and be ready always okay god says be ready always because he's coming like a thief in the night be ready always and not exactly like that people say that but we're going to talk about that so you're always supposed to be prepared he said he's not ready get that how subtle that is people are like oh he's just not ready nah that's not what he's meaning he's saying he's not ready Okay. To every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Okay. So basically, you're supposed to be ready to answer God, answer for all you've done in meekness and fear of God being mad at you. So when you answer him, he doesn't dislike what it is you answer. So that you're ready to give him an answer that's satisfying. So that means you live a life that's gratifying towards God, not yourself. Remember, we gratify not ourselves, but God that is alive in us. And that's for any book you read that it tells you to do that. Okay, now we're working our way down. Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor time when God's coming. Listen, he's blaspheming. This is, guys, it's right here before you. It all fits. He's blaspheming God. Let's keep going. Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. Therefore, be ye also ready. <laughs> Therefore, be ye also ready. And he says, I'm not ready yet. Come on. And they put it in the newspaper. Well, come on, fam. It's right here. Let's go. Luke chapter 12, verse 40. Luke chapter 21, verse 28. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. John chapter 14, verse 3, and then John chapter 2, verse 27. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 through 9. And we're going to go over that separately. And then Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. And that deals with receiving whatever only would that we put out. So what you do on this earth, all your actions, it provides your ending. God looks at all you did. And he decides whether or not you are serving him or doing things against his kingdom or not in line with what he wants. Doing the will of God is how you get in heaven. So did you tell someone Jesus Christ is real? Did you believe? That's what I'm saying. Most people won't. That's what I'm saying. That's why the gates of hell are wide. All right. Remember, we talked about 1 Timothy 3.3. 3. He's a brawler. He's a fighter. He's a striker. He's all of them. He's all of them in one. He fights. He, he, it's his career. He makes a living fighting right there. It's, come on now. And then we got Titus chapter one, verse seven. We didn't even get there yet. Proverbs chapter 76, verse 29. And that's a violent man entice his neighbor. Listen to me right here. Any fighter that I know, they've gotten to a brawl or something dealing around any surroundings they're at. That's why when they go out, they have bodyguards to stop them from getting into fights because people challenge them. And we're not even at that part. They just That's just situational awareness at that point right there. We're not even talking about anything. Now, Psalms chapter 140, verse 11. Evil shall hunt the, the violent man to overthrow him. Listen, when someone's a violent man or they're seen as a violent person, even by nature, there are people all over the place that will come to hunt them. Same thing as like a mercenary. They're coming to hunt the bad guy. That's what they do. They come to hunt the champion. That's what they do by nature. They like they get hunted and they get attacked because people are wicked and it's wicked spirits because they're doing wickedness because God says don't do that. Look, and it's even backed by by uh, Psalms 18 verse 48. And we're looking at how um, that's that's basically acknowledging the type of characters that surround people that are in a fighting nature, a striking nature, that their nature is is that of brawling, is that of fighting, is that of their career. 
even though they don't want it to be. They could be wanting to be peaceful, but they're going to be thinking about it or thrown into a fighting situation because their career is wicked, and that's against God. God doesn't like that. All right, let's get to it. Um, now, let's quickly... I'm going to backtrack. Excuse me for a second. We're going to do chat. Uh, we're looking at 140 verse 1, and this is still in Psalms. We're looking at slavery and the torture of it. So listen, when they're in these contracts, they're under slave contracts. They have to do what they're told. They don't have a choice. Like, they can't tell the boss what they want to do. I mean, listen, there be some contracts that are evil. Like, I, you know, I don't want to jump out the window and say, but allegedly contracts that are asking for the blood of their family, allegedly. Now, I, I don't know of this myself, but it was mentioned by several artists that it were on the contract, it required the life of their family. And they had to, like, notify them who, you know, it's just wicked. I don't know that to be true, but we'll see in the future. Okay, that's so evil. Telling me that, oh, if I want this billion, uh, two million dollars, I got to offer you up my niece, my nephew, my son, my daughter. That's so wicked. That's sacrificing the mola. Remember, we talked about that. We went in the book of, uh, uh, excuse me, of Hebrews, because this is old. Even in Leviticus, we talked about that because that's when they were really doing it. I'm telling you, man, it's wicked. Now, let's talk Psalms chapter uh, Ma oh, excuse me matthew chapter 11 verse 12 now this refers to the jack boy the robbers all these dudes who take from these people who have like these are the people who are wickedly in search of gaining without doing anything these are also features that go within it now understand when you're coming to look at the mercy of god his grace and mercy grace and mercy is not extended to these people they if they pass away in the middle of doing these sins they will go straight to hell there is no in lieu. He did not die for you because you're looking to rob, looking to take, looking to hurt, looking to harm. You're looking to do this wherever, however you can. And God does not excuse you. So he's going to send you to the wicked death. And I'm trying to help you guys because, again, I care about you and your families. Your kid wants you when you're, he's growing up. They don't want nothing to happen to you. So get that. Stop stealing and work hard for it. Work to the sweat of your brow to the day that you die. That's how you do it. That's how I was raised. That's how a lot of you were raised and trying to do it different because you see the big money. Stop looking at the big money. It's fake. They're lying. Now, let's get it to it. Psalms chapter 7, verse 16. Listen, man. This verse here, I'm going to say it again. Psalms chapter 7, verse 16 proves there is, listen, there is no karma. Karma does not exist. It's judgment. Judgment is given at every turn, everything you do. You're judged. God judges you. He allows things. And you guys want to know why he won't, Why is he allowing the wickedness? Why won't you say, Lord, okay, I'm done doing it my way. I'll listen. I'll follow your way. Why don't you do that? Because if you did that, he'll show you. I had to do that. He showed me. I was doing wicked things. He had to show me. And it hurt. But I understood it. That's the whole fact of the matter. You guys got to learn to move that way. And I'm telling you, it is going to bless you. Everything in your, it's funny because all in one year you doing that, you'll get everything you dreamed about. And then you spent like 10 years not doing it. One year you get everything you dreamed about. That's how God works because God's like that for real. And I'll test that. Now let's go down. We got to keep going. Now this series, guys, Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse eight. Okay. Listen to me. This I need you to burn this to your brain. This speaks on judgment and justice. All right. So here's the thing, John Jones, no matter how big or how great you get, there's judgment and there's justice on everything that's done. And we've seen that. I don't know you guys, if you guys were around to my new subscribers, guys, listen, now when it came to justice, he had got involved in some stuff outside of the fights and then he got, he got in trouble. I don't know if he got locked up. They didn't go into detail. He got in trouble, but he bounced back and now he's fighting again. That's to God be the glory. But did he give God the praise? That's important. We talked about that. Okay. And we talked about that. And even in earlier Amos, we talked about the importance of giving God the glory. Listen to me. This is part of your armor. I just read this out of Psalms. So you giving God the glory or understanding these things I just told you today and dealing with not being a violent man, refraining from being violent and how God deals with the violent man, that's part of your armor. So Understand, you're, 
it's not violence when you're going against the enemies of God. It's violence when you're going doing things in your own vain glory. Because glory is to be given to Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, guys. It's simple. You got to put everything together, reading comprehension. We ain't done. We done with John Jones. But listen, John, man, you got to figure things out. First off, you know, you left, you came back, you left. Now you're back. I mean, fam, you got to make a decision. Are you staying or are you not? Are you choosing God or are you going left? Come on, fam. You know I rock. All rights reserved.